I always say, you will not even know that your choice of a spouse shapes your future until you get married in a lot of cases. Your choice of a spouse actually determines a lot of your future. So choose well. And if you don't know how to, don't choose with your hormones. I promise you, that's what people do. They just choose with their hormones. It's a fact. It might have sounded a bit, you know, direct, but it's a fact. People choose with their emotions sometimes. But wait, go back to the Hadith. Go back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And I've always said the two most powerful organs, the heart and the mind, don't ever give anyone the control of those two because they will hurt you. They will hurt you. You give that to Allah and you give it to anyone after that within what Allah has ordained. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, take this advice very deeply. If a person cannot maintain a relationship with Allah, how can this person maintain a relationship with you? Impossible. الصالحين من عبادكم وإمائكم إن يكونوا فقراء يغنيهم الله من فضله والله واسع عليم. We love women, but no one wants to be married. That's why zina is widespread. That's why brothers now they're getting married on the darkies in secret. You know these, you know these secret marriages. And the brother comes to tell me, brother, it's halal. Like, please sit down, yeah. Sit down. Stop trying to play with the deen. Stop trying to play with the deen. Anyone can get married, my brothers. Anyone can sleep with someone. But a real man, a real rishay, my young brothers, he gets married and understands that in marriage. It's not all rainbows and lollipops. It's difficulties. Yeah, there's good times, no doubt. But there's hardship. And that's why it's half your deed. It's half your faith. Ah. Little boys. We love women, but we don't like to. What's the halal way of approaching a girl you like? We've made it more complicated than uh, the Sahaba. They interacted with each other, they talked to each other, they worked with each other, they were in business partnerships. All kinds of interactions happened between men and women, but with principle. It was respectful, it was dignified. And when a companion, when, when somebody likes somebody else, you know what they did? Here's the astaghfirullah part. Here's what they did. Hey, I like you. Want to get married? And she'd say, um, maybe, talk to my dad. He'd say, okay. And then you go to the dad and say, hey, I, I like your daughter. And she's, I mean, I talked to her, she's not entirely opposed to the idea. Is it cool? And he says, let me talk to my daughter. How this happens today in London, as you go to a girl, respectfully, hey, we worked together for three years, would you consider marrying me? And she's like, ah. And maybe she says, please don't talk to my dad, he'll kill me. Because if you talk to my dad, he'll say, this is why you go to work? This is why we sent you to uni? Like. Many young men, they go into marriage not knowing that a woman is created very differently to a man. Not knowing how to deal when she becomes emotional. Not knowing what to do when she is very sensitive towards her feelings. So as a result, it becomes a shock to the man when he becomes married. And he realizes he has married someone who is very different to him. So it's very important to the young men who are looking to get married that they learn about the way the Prophet ﷺ was with his wives. Learn that men and women are different. The male is not like the female. And if you are a father, then take your son, sit him down and educate him about the rights of a wife. Educate him about what it means to be a husband. Warn him about abusing his wife. Warn him about not oppressing his wife because this is a reality that we see day in and day out, my dear. Aisha radiallahu anha says, when I was younger and more agile and more fit, the Prophet raced me or chased me and I ran and overtook him. I beat him. Years passed. Aisha radiallahu anha put on weight, she became bigger. And the Prophet is in, a, is in a campaign. He's traveling with the Ashab. And then in the middle of the desert, he tells the army, go ahead. 
go ahead me and my wife will stay back a little so when they're gone and out of sight so the Prophet وسلم, looks at her and says you want to race uh, so can you imagine our mother Aisha getting ready to race so they stood and they قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم